the scope of building businesses in India is much larger than what you see in these countries. Okay. The macro factors are very favorable for India. When you come back to India, the the hustle which is here, especially with the youth, the drive to build something, the drive to achieve something, it's it's unmatched. It's unparalleled. The VC industry in India is still very shallow. And when I say shallow, there are like about 20, 25 funds you can count. Mm. And that's pretty much it, right? Yeah. If you compare this to China, there are more than 350 homegrown funds out there. And the count is even more in US. It's a major discrimination, which I personally feel is against the founder in India whose caliber is not being judged in the right lens, in the right color, simply because he's sitting here in India and building this business. Because this is the same guy who would go out there in US, join a startup, be one of the key members and build that business out. In today's episode, we have spoken about what are the kind of ideas that India in work in India. US or China, the startups are very fast. If someone copies the same ideas in India, then why do they not work? What are the kind of startups which get funded in India by the VCs? Which companies or which startups can you and I can make in order to multiply our money? How we Indians need to learn to get better at money and why? Why do we Indians maximum हमारे पैसे में गलतियां कर चुके होते हैं और उस गलती के बाद कभी भी हम उसको करेक्ट भी करने की कोशिश नहीं करते वे स्पोकन अबाउट ऑल दीस थिंग्स एंड इन दी एंड वे स्पोकन अबाउट वन वेरी सिंपल थिंग कैसे हर एक इंसान ये सीख के अपना पैसा मल्टीप्लाई कर सकता है वे स्पोकन अबाउट ऑल ऑफ दीस थिंग्स विद द फाउंडर ऑफ स्टॉक ग्रो अजय लकोटिया वो स्पेंड हिज टर्म एज अ वी सी बहुत सारे स्टार्टअप को फंड किया है पहला बिजनेस उन्होंने मैन्युफैक्चरिंग में स्टार्ट किया उसको सेल कर दिया बहुत पैसे में फिर उसके बाद ही वेंट टू डू हिज मास्टर्स देन ही डिड हिज जॉब एज अ कंसल्टेंट इन यू के सो इज हैड एन एक्सपीरियंस अराउंड द वर्ल्ड एंड पूरी दुनिया में उन्होंने बहुत सारी चीज़ें देखी एंड इंडिया में आके बहुत एक यूनिक स्टार्टअप बनाया ऐसा क्यों और ऐसा क्या है इस स्टार्टअप में विच दे फील दैट इट्स गोन बी इंडिया फर्स्ट स्टार्टअप विच इज गोन चेंज लाइफ फॉर एवर मेक श्योर यू वॉच दिस एपिसोड टिल दी एंड That's it. That's it. Why even now? <laughs> like why? Like what's your, is it like the lifestyle you've gotten? I think I adopted this whole habit of sleeping three, four hours when I was at ISB. Okay. And that's one habit I've carried from business school. Uh, <laughs> makes you much more productive. Uh, you get probably additional four or five hours as mm. compared to everyone else to think about things, to execute things, to look at different ideas, right? Which doesn't have, if, if I'm spending eight hours sleeping, I lose those eight hours. But then isn't like sleep important for the other battle around the world? Sleep more to actually be more productive. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah, I, mean? I think all of these are myths. Okay. Right. Uh, if if you're excited about doing something, you'll not be able to sleep. That's so true. Right? That's so, so true. Uh, four hours, three hours is good enough because after that, I'm, I actually can't sleep. Once mm. I wake up in the morning, I have to get back to action. Okay, that's yeah. that, that's that's it. So no work life balance kaise manage karte? Do you have that or do you believe in work life balance by the way? That's the first thing. No. <laughs> 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 work life balance is is good for people, right? Who say I have a life which I want to drive a balanced life. Uh someone who's dri- driven by purpose, right? If you want to build something, if you're doing something which consumes you. If your purpose is consuming your thoughts, your life, there's no work-life balance. This is your work. This is your life, mm. right? If you go back saying, I want a balance in five other aspects, mm. you'll not be able to do what you want to do in life. Wow, that's so true. But it's like a battle going on around the world every day. <laughs> it's because, you know, I also believe in this, that I believe there has to be immersion. Ki when you're, so I feel like instead of trying to find a balance, find different phases and different slots. Bang so, on, right? So, and you know, I sometimes go back to my friends, my family talking about this when they say, 
you don't celebrate your birthday on your birth date i'm like no i need to find that window where i can actually go and celebrate so it doesn't matter whether it is this date or this event it's my mindset if i feel like celebrating something i'll celebrate it a week later a month later but i have to be in that mind frame of celebrating wow it. yeah so like when celebration is there 100% celebration exactly. when there's work this like it should not be like you're celebrating on a weekend and then you're like oh jaldi se uthna padega jana padega so you can't even celebrate properly you can't, you can't even work properly right? so it's like same applies to your work life balance thing right uh-huh. if you're working you just work, work right yeah. and if you need to take a break just take a break um, do you can't do both of them at the same time uh, doesn't work multitasking doesn't work <laughs> elon we need your help <laughs> how do you do that so i was i was reading about elon musk okay like because he's he's also like a immersion kind of guy yeah. work 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 but he works on different things so he he takes a project so he's like when there's tesla yeah then i'll finish this project whether it takes a day a month a year i'll do this yes. then it's spacex then if that does then it's twitter then it's whatever he wants to do yes. now so project wise so do you also it's, like how do you manage your time right so you have to be very good at context switching context switching right. okay so go deeper on this let's put it like this if you are say i'm currently talking to you my whole mind is here i have probably 50 other things i need to attend to but i have in my mind put a focus at this point in this present moment saying i need to finish this this is critical and important for me i'll go back to the next priority after this and when i'm doing that i'll put everything else at bay for that time mm. right so it's it's just opposite of multitasking you don't need to do 10 things at the same time you need to do one thing but do it very well in that moment of time that's important that's interesting Well, so this is what you have learned in ISB. <laughs> Sleep for four hours, do one thing at a time. What else did you learn from India's? I don't know. I say subjectively the best <laughs> MBA college. I don't know ranking wise because it's always a battle uh, between yeah, IMA so and ISB. So what did you learn in ISB? Ki ऐसा क्या होता है कि जो दूसरे लोग बाहर नहीं सीख पाते? बहुत एक बहुत interesting चीज सीखी और समझी है and I think. it takes me a year before i went to isb so okay i was working with capgemini consulting in uk and i learned how big the it industry is hmm. and i was amazed by it because before that i was in manufacturing industry okay right it's it's a different ball game altogether yeah. and then when you get exposed to a industry which is so different so humongous and growing so fast you want to know how this works you want to build something out yep. there and i can't go back to my school day saying now i'm switching from commerce to science <laughs> i want to learn how it works yeah. i mujhe coding seekhni hai doesn't work like that right so the only way for you to switch your career path is actually to go to a business school mm. where they let you understand dynamics of multiple industries and it gives you an option to change your pathway of life change your career path but when you go to business school and especially in india it's not a career transformation journey it is a salary transformation journey <laughs> okay main is salary pe aaya tha is salary pe nikal raha hu and i was i was like shocked at the behavior when i saw it pretty much in all the business schools and this is what they sell saying entry yahan pe hai this is your salary entry this is your exit you can't be treating students as commodities and a school as a factory saying this is the guy who's coming in at this package and going out at this package that's the wrong way to do it right and fortunately for me before i went to isb almost everyone i spoke to especially the alums they all said one thing ensure that you are able to network very well when you are in isb it's like one year study what you want to study and hmm. don't study what everyone else is studying okay because then you'll get into that racing acha wo isb se nikal ke mckinsey mein ja raha hai wo bcg mein ja raha hai figure out what you want to do and figure out very quickly mm-hmm. that's important because you don't have time it's one year course and then the more difficult part is instead of focusing just on studies ensure you network with people because these 400 people in 10 years would be the ceo cfo ctos of different organizations mm. and these are the guys who are going to help you not now not in short term because they'll all be trying to find their own career paths बट दस साल बाद ये उस पोजीशन पे होंगे जहां वो आपकी मदद कर सकते हैं 
in whatever you are trying to do. So build that network and build network outside ISB. ISB or any such business school gives you that opportunity to meet the leaders of different industries. Okay. Most of the people are not able to leverage that mm. right? because they are extremely focused on getting their scores. I was extremely focused on finding all the people I could talk to, create a network. So when I come out of the business school, I can tap into this network if required. That's super critical for everyone who's going into a business school, saying, "Mujhe yahan se nikal ke karna kya hai?" Mm. And if you go with that focus, then you are able to pick up the right courses and the right people you want to speak with. Okay, this, tell me, like you spoke a lot about networking, and <clears throat> you believe in this. You've tried to do this. How can people network with people? Because you know it's like a such loosely used term. Ki log aise bolte hain ki okay, there are. Giving an example, there are 500 students in my class. Yes, I vibe with two random people, right? Me go and they start vibe. Karna hai. I am having fun with them. Yes, and then everything else. If I've been trying to talk to it, it's so evident that it's transactional. Yeah, like it's evident. Usko pata hai ki wo mujhse isliye dosti karne ko shikar hai because <laughs> maybe and samne wala bhi isliye reciprocate kar raha hai, right? So and that's what happens with in forget like classmates. Let's just talk about people who are one level above. Yeah. You look up to them, their position, their power, their their brain, or whatever they yes. wherever they are, or their career trajectory. You want to talk with them? Yeah, here, me say, one level up. I mean, go this way, friendship. They know that it's transactional. Yes. You know it's transactional. Yes. So, 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 you know it's because people can sniff it out they know yeah. it is transactional right so you tell them it's not transactional be super honest saying this is what i think i can learn from you as i move forward right now i don't have any such thing agenda i just want to know you better because i look up to you hmm. right i'm not expecting you to give me a job offer after a year when i pass out i'm not expecting you to help me with me, with my resume i'm not help, expecting you to do all of this I just like you from what you are doing, and I want to be in touch with you. That honesty works; it touches people. When people reach out to me on LinkedIn or when they meet me, and they say, "Sir, I want a job," I have to tell them, "Send me a resume because I don't know you." Yeah. Right. But when they say, "You know, I want to figure this out. This is interesting about you. Can you tell me a little more?" Mm. It becomes very easy for me to start a conversation with that person. Sure. And I remember that. अच्छा ये बंदा मुझसे यहाँ मिला था and he wanted to understand these things. Mm. That's how a relationship starts. Interesting. You know, I have a add up to this. Like this is what I've learned in my journey. Is so. What you do is like you reach out to a person. First is be absolute honest. Yes. Like whatever you like about that person, it can be position, it can be money, it can be the car they're driving. <laughs> yes. Like you know, just be honest. And the second, on top of that, what you can do is, hey, I feel that my superpower is, for example, building a story on internet. Okay, that's my superpower. Yeah. Then, if you ever feel like this is something today or in ten years from now you'd need help in this. I'll be there for you. Just remember my name. Exactly. And I'll be there to help you out, regardless of whatever we are working on. Like just exactly. something I, I'm going to add value. Maybe I'll be able to add value. Maybe you're way better than me. Yeah. I don't know, but I'm willing to help you out with that. So if it ever works out, so what you have done is you have just told them one thing that you can help out with, and you have given a set up a context that I'm ready to give you value. Exactly. If I'm valuable, then only you build a relationship with me. Neither ठीक है. Exactly. Raj, I know so many founders in the industry today, and there's nothing. that we exchange on a business perspective there's nothing that we give and take from each other but we know that if there's something i need from them i can go knocking their door saying i need help on this particular aspect and they'll be more than happy to help right that's how you start building relationships yeah. which is not transactional saying i'm here whenever you need me and it gets reciprocated interesting very interesting thought but you said by, like let's going back to your story you said you were working in in uk So before that, like, what was your? How did you land up to UK? <laughs> so where were you born? Like, give me, give me that like little history of that. Born and brought up in Calcutta, okay. uh, in a business family. And good part of a business family is that you learn a lot of things on the dining table. Oh yes. Right. Bad 100%. part is 
there's a competition right in your family. Yeah. <laughs> the moment you start thinking of work, right? There are five other people who are thinking of building similar businesses right in that family. And, but there are very interesting nuances that I learned, especially in very early stage, uh, because I went out building a business right out of college. Okay. So I. In in Calcutta, most of the guys, especially when you come from a business family, you would have like your morning college and rest of the day is for you. Huh. What do you do with that? So did you, did you also go to Xavier's or? I went to Bhavanipur College. Okay, Bhavanipur. <laughs> morning college done and uske baad kya karoge? So huh. you start thinking about all the new ideas which are there. Unfortunately, there was no Google in 2000, 2002. Okay. And all your research would be like when you go to industry exhibitions, understand what's happening hmm. out there. So I got into manufacturing industry, very different ball game, very difficult to execute build business in a sector like that. And a uh, few very interesting things that I learned uh, when I built this business for like eight years. One is you should never land up in middle of a supply chain. Right. Never land up so, in the middle of supply chain. So, if there is a business, there is a producer, there is an intermediary, and there is an intermediary, and then last is a consumer. In the beach, there are businesses, hai, it's good to inherit that business. That is, if your dad, your uncle, your dadaji has been doing that business, you can inherit it. Never go and build a business here. Build it either where you are either end of the supply chain. Otherwise, oh. you'll always get squeezed out. Oh, damn. Right? The other very interesting thing that I learned was you should always try and become a price maker and not a price taker. Okay. Think of every business, even when I'm building software, am I a price maker or am I a price taker, right? Whenever you're building business where you are a price taker, you will lose margin in that business, mm -hmm. right? Suddenly a large, big business will come in and he'll squeeze out your margins and you're a dead guy there. Yeah. Right? If you are a price maker, right? then you are in command of that situation. You know how much price pe kitna supply kar sakna. So you can play with both the price and the supply of yeah. the product. Third very interesting thing that I learned, and this is not me, this is what I learned from my dad. He always used to tell me saying, if someone wants product, then either you a product that is frictionless, ho. that is, the pricing is so low that every person who wants to buy it, doesn't think about it before buying it. A very realistic example in Indian context is Gutka. Hmm. Right? A guy who can't afford a cigarette can actually go and buy a one rupee Gutka and he would keep buying it because it is giving him that sense of pleasure. Yeah. But it is frictionless for him, mm. right? A rupee spent is not something he'll be worried about. True. Or go on the other end when you, where you're selling very small quantity, right? But your margins are super high, which is like jewelry and diamond. If you get stuck somewhere in between and there's nothing wrong with any of the other businesses, right? Your struggle would be relatively higher than the guy who is building a business on either end of these spectrums. Interesting. Damn. I'm thinking about imagine I business build a business, where is the problem? <laughs> <laughs> he said like, guys, do we right after this, I'm like, like leadership team, guys, are we thinking in the right direction? <laughs> no, but this makes so much sense. Because, yeah. So I come, from, I come from FMCG background, right? And FMC, FMCG background, man, one of the first rule is accessibility. Yes. You make it such accessible on such a point that whatever you're selling, it needs to be available at one rupee as well. Yes. And it needs to be available at yes. thousand rupees as well. Yeah. So that it's so true because people, so I'll tell you how we, you know, there was, so we used to sell a detergent like my father, uh -huh. a little premium detergent. Okay. But it was a local market, local name. Everybody thought that how will we be able to compete with likes of Tide and Surface? Yeah. Okay. Our strategy was we launched a one rupee pouch in smaller villages. So mm -hmm. what started happen, these people started buying our product only for expensive party clothes. <laughs> okay, right? That's how it started. And at that time, there was no, uh, you, know, you know, Ariel or Surfex or anyone who's selling at one rupees. Mm. We were the only one. And we got like such a great market share because it's a frictionless. <laughs> Bang on. That's exactly how this works. Yes. And it does. And it helps. And biggest why biggest people started doing that one rupee thing it gave them all the more reasons to start buying a one kg product as well. So it it does. just, yes, it's a foot in the door. And mm -hmm. once people get a taste of it 
and they they decide that this is the brand they are going to go with then nothing stops them yeah yeah interesting so that's what you learned in your family <laughs> business so you went to bhavanipur and then you went to uk how did you land up in uk like i want to know that so story. i like family i family business guy in uk consulting firm how did that happen so this actually this manufacturing business was done between me and my cousin brother okay uh very unique learnings that we had and in about 8 years we got good inbound uh interest to buy out the business okay and this specially happened from uh my clients who wanted to backward integration okay they like acha theek hai we'll buy you out uh and that's where i got the first taste of money right uh, it was not crazy valuation what we see these days right but we made decent amount of money and i moved out of india i started spending time in europe i was actually learning how to fly micro light aircrafts in scotland okay uh when i came across capgemini consulting folks and started talking to them and started uh working on some of the consulting projects with them and that's when i think the whole scope of how big this industry is and how big this is going to be and how transformational it industry is going to be as we move forward uh dawned upon me and i wanted to learn more understand more but there's only limited scope for you when you are working to figure out how the industry works mm. right and that's when i said let me take a break from life figure out what i want to do next and how i want to do this yeah. uh applied to a couple of b schools and interestingly i asb said this is a good place for you to come back and learn uh i had uh, invites from some of the other b schools in us and europe but there's one very specific reason i came back to india one i wanted to build the business back in india okay you know if if i would have when gone to say a harvard or say a london school of business once you come out of these business schools you build businesses or you take up jobs in those countries right and at that point of time in my mind it was very clear that the the scope of building businesses in india is much larger than what you see in these countries okay. the macro factors are very favorable for india okay go deeper like why do you feel that at that time you it, felt like what was there in india it, like what did you feel like it comes when you live in these countries and you'll realize that one major thing which is missing is challenges mm. right if where you have challenge where you have problems that's where you come and build solution right yeah agar road toote hue nahi hai to aap usko theek kahan se karoge true right that's one major issue second the hunger is not there most of the countries where i was working visiting meeting people people are very complacent right they're happy with their life so that drive of doing something different drive of building something drive of disrupting something is not there when you come back to india the the hustle which is here especially with the youth the drive to build something the drive to achieve something it's it's unmatched it's unparalleled so the, the i i kind of agree to this point because if you look at india left right center our infra- infrastructure is not solved that's the first level of yes. problem then uh, after infrastructure our healthcare is not solved i mean that also comes in infrastructure but yeah. like to just putting it like more our education is not solved our smartphone penetration is not solved yet and so this is so many things this is all a function of the large population that we have mm. right think of this and I'll, i'll try and give you this perspective even if you build a business amazingly well just for bangalore mm. right you would have pretty much solved it for a population which is of the size of united kingdom yeah right to aapne ek city ki problem solve ki aapne ek business sirf ek city mein banaya but you have pretty much build the business for a whole country outside india that's the scope of work that you have here that's the scope of scaling a business that you have here that's an interesting point okay now let's go back to the isb and we try to pick pick up on indian story again so isb mein you went isb after your consulting Correct. you're like okay i want to learn i want to shift careers what happened after that so post isb uh, very honestly speaking i was supposed to or i at least took up a role with one of the it companies to join their us office okay and that's when bollywood happened bollywood okay <laughs> so 
2010 के आसपास फ्रॉम ऋतिक रोशन टू फरहान अख्तर ऑल दीज गाइज द प्रोटेगनिस्ट इन देयर मूवीज फॉर ऑलवेज इन्वेस्टमेंट बैंकर्स एंड इट इंट्रीड मिसिंग यार दिस इज इंटरेस्टिंग अगर हर एक बंदा इन्वेस्टमेंट बैंकर है मे बी दिस इज मोर इंटरेस्टिंग Hey, I want to become financial trader yeah. because Ritik Roshan was that in Zindagi na milegi to. Exactly. So, मुझे लगा ये interesting ये करते हैं. So, interest eyes भी में ना investment banking jobs नहीं आते थे उस समय. So we reached out to me and a couple of my friends who thought this is a cool thing to do. We reached out to banks who would offer these roles. Yeah. Spoke to them. And that's how I landed up at ICICI Bank in their investment banking team. Okay. Right. so very interesting it's it's like it's a high flying job mm. right but then i realized that bollywood got it wrong okay right in this whole uh, ecosystem ecosystem there's someone who sits on top of investment bankers that is a venture capitalist right and that's where i said yaar ye garbad ho gaya ab isko fix karte right so started interestingly i was speaking with a lot of venture capital funds Uh, primarily because as a banker i was talking to them pitching to them a lot of different businesses they could invest in and uh, that's when uh, temasex vc arm vertex venture they oh. wanted to set up their india office Indiana. oh nice right and as in conversation with them uh, they asked me to come on the other side of the table so uh, moved from india to singapore spent almost i think 7 8 months out there and that's when we all realized saying sitting in singapore and shuttling between india and singapore almost every month is very difficult yeah right? so why not set up a office here in, in india. india and if india the question was bangalore mumbai delhi right mumbai you don't have a vc ecosystem yep uh in fact vc ecosystem is just now getting matured in india but uh, mumbai you don't have much delhi you didn't have much so all the only choice we had was bangalore, bangalore right that's how we started building the bangalore office in ub city and uh, i think i did that for about 5 and a half years okay all right so now let's talk about vc industry okay i'm intrigued because recently i got into it i <laughs> i started dealing with vcs i started talking uh, to them just got like my little taste very so small it's it's a very interesting industry uh it's very closely guarded industry also right so getting an entry into venture capital fund is very difficult yeah the two normal pathways are either through investment banking or uh, through consulting okay. right so if you look oh, there's a third like if you are like a say, first time founder who sold his company <laughs> and now you're getting <laughs> yes which is a rare thing to happen in india but but when i started we had like 10 15 notable funds in india who were writing checks between say 5 to 15 million rest were all very small funds who were writing checks between say half a million to 2 million dollars mm. raj it's i started in like 2011 it's 22 now in 10 years of time it's not changed much the vc industry in india is still very shallow and when i say shallow there are like about 20 25 funds you can count mm. and that's pretty much it right yeah if you compare this to china there are more than 350 homegrown funds out there and the count is even more in us right so from a industry perspective we are we see industry is still growing okay uh, we don't have real hedge funds in india not a single indian grown hedge fund who is able to write large checks uh not enough lps here in india right uh the pension funds the family offices who are investing in venture capital funds to invest in startups so predominantly it is still driven yeah. by us funds who have their offices out here yeah so okay the so you what's the problem do you, why do you feel like why because now like our country has money like yes. it's getting there yeah, like yeah. i mean we are getting enough there are a lot of hni is a lot of offices there are a lot of people who have money in fact we i was just looking at certain stats in how last 5 years the 
AUMs of certain mutual funds yes. or certain funds have like just grown dramatically, drastically, right? Because retail is also it's, it's not it is, part yes. into it. So, what's the problem? Why we are not able to grow like a large chunk? Like why there are only twenty twenty five people playing a old school white British boy game? So, the the problem is two sided. Yeah. Right. One is where you have to see those. startups grow big hmm. and start giving very large exits and reinvest back in the ecosystem right the second problem is a is a very unique problem to india or i would say southeast asia where if the industry is dominated by funds which are uh, say primarily us or european funds they would always go back and invest in a business which they have seen either in us or in china and they have seen those businesses grow very big yeah right to agar if there's a startup if there's a founder who goes and pitches his business and the vc fund would say i've not seen this happen in us in other countries right yeah. i've not seen this happen in china how can you build this here in india and it's it's a major discrimination which i personally feel is against the founder in india whose caliber is not being judged in the right lens in the right color simply because he is sitting here in india and building this business because this is the same guy who would go out there in us join a startup be one of the key members and build that business out interesting so you mean like indians go out there <laughs> try to build bigger businesses yes. then indians trying to build bigger businesses here because the problems of india are different and the business which we need here are different and nobody's ready to fund that because they've not seen the similar kind of bang on right and i've seen this in my vc life okay uh without taking name of the founders i think some of the largest grocery uh supply chain businesses some of the largest uh, uh food delivery businesses and i've seen them at like amazingly good valuations uh and we could not invest in spite of having all the interest in doing that is because we are always stuck in this comparison saying this business has not done well in these 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 Country. countries the unit economics are not viable there how can it become viable in india right their turnaround time is not crossing a specific number in us or in china how can it happen in india right so me as a fund manager sitting here it became so difficult for me to justify back to my investment committee saying these guys are killing it they are better than their counterparts in any other country we should invest in them uh and they have done amazingly well in last 5 yeah. 6 years now when i go back and see they have done amazingly well you could have gotten uh, crazy returns on that <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the pain but you know it's so true but, but iski wajah se ek aur cheez hogi even now the founders which are coming they are simply looking at what are the successful businesses in us in uk or in china yeah trying to copy paste the same thing in india yeah whereas there are a lot of businesses which are not built for india they can't be made in india because there's so many things in india which is different right raj you have touched a very interesting point because see founders do tarike se business banate hain one is a business which he is passionate about hmm. he knows how to drive this build this or if it is very unique he will find a way of doing it yeah right the other businesses are the business what the vc wants to build yeah right then he finds a founder saying <laughs> ye banda raj is building this business which is jiska blueprint mere paas us mein pada hai uh. and i will help him build this out these businesses are driven by vcs mm -hmm. sitting on the board and the business life is one quarter to the other quarter one mis to the other yeah. mis saying ye matrices hai which has been given to me these matrices i am following so true and every quarter on quarter i'll go back saying mera itna paisa burn ho gaya now let's raise the next round yeah right that's a playbook which has been running for last 10 years I personally think it is going to change now okay because these last 2 years have been very unique mm. uh covid has really changed the way people started looking at businesses second major key issue is 
Now, even after that, in last one year, the momentum with which capital was being thrown, especially at uh, businesses here, or probably globally, right? That momentum has switched. Mm. If we get into a recession next year, only the businesses who knew how to build real economics, the right unit economics in their businesses would survive. And that's also going to change how VCs look at these businesses because if you keep throwing capital to solve a problem, it's not a scalable business model. It's a scalable revenue model. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. So... <clears throat> Should we be scared now <laughs> or should we not be scared? Like, is this, is our next round going to happen? Is what like everyone who's watching this should think about? <laughs> like, what's the because it's so true. And I feel, but you know, there's, there's again, your point just bang on. Like, it's, it just came into, how do I, like, I just realized ki what you said before is coming true here as well. Ki, if everybody says that whatever the sentiment of a market, whatever happens in the US, just the, f just the rumors of that affect the Indian market as it well. It does, yes. Like, like nobody knows right now, honestly, whether the funding will dry up in India or no, because there are large, large family offices also getting into it. Yes. So on one side, there are a lot of interest in the private world. So there's a lot of funds coming in. But because the rumors are there that, yeah. hey, you know, US may market has dried up, momentum has slowed. Yeah. <laughs> so India, maybe people have started saying they could tough time are coming, tough time are, without actually knowing whether they'll be able to do it or no. But if you look at and read about certain few funds, they have very specific, like, way larger than life kind of rounds <laughs> just to deploy in India. If they have yeah. raised that kind of money, they're obviously going to deploy it. Raj, so here are two issues there. Yes, they have raised capital, but when a VC fund raises capital, it's on paper. Mm. Right? They don't have money sitting in their bank saying, okay, tomorrow I like what Raj is doing and I'll go and I'll write deploy. a check. Uh, it doesn't work like this. He has to go and knock his LP's door saying, uh, hey guys, I found this business. This is interesting. We have an agreement. I'm calling the money. And the LP has to honor his commitment saying, okay, I'm giving you the money to deploy. Uh, right? This chain is breaking down. And that's where the problem is. The, Fair. the LP who promised to write the check, if he's not comfortable giving away money right now, you can't help it. Hmm. Having said that, can businesses survive? Yes. Right. The moment it's, it's a mindset issue, right? The moment I say, I don't have to chase the growth anymore because that growth is coming at the cost of me burning a lot of capital, hmm. which in turn is given by my investors. I'll recalibrate the business, try and bring it to a point where it is closer to break even, even if I want to do this for a year. Can people do this? Can founders do it? Yes, they can, right? It comes at a cost of at times uh, removing the flab in the system, right? It sometimes comes at the cost of recalibrating your whole business plan. But uh, that's the decision of a founder. He has to be very hard headed saying, I want to build this business like this instead of just chasing numbers and matrices which are going to please the board because that board currently is not in a position to keep throwing money at mm. the business anymore. That's that's a that's an interesting take and it's so true ki at the end of the day if LP decides that hey no abhi nahi hai <laughs> then you can't do anything yeah. and that that sums up most of the things. Okay, tell me you have you have studied business in US you have managed a fund in which is again southeast based uh, based right so you understand the dynamics of both the markets what is diff what is the difference between u.s markets india market and chinese market or maybe like the southeast market as well what's a major <laughs> difference or what kind of different problems startups face and why this ecosystem is really very well done in u.s like yeah. why there are the US ecosystem is insanely good comparatively to Indian ecosystem. Okay. <sighs> okay. Think of when the VC industry really took off in India. And ideally, I would say the number is about 10 to 12 years back. Mm. So the founders in which we were all investing, right, 
they were not as mature as what we see today and the quality of founders have drastically improved in last 10 years vc ecosystem in us is much older much deeper right and the capital has started recycling out there okay. that is if 20 years back i invested 5 billion dollar that money has come back to me right multiplied mm. instead of 5 10 has come back to me and i'm reinvesting that capital now and again that recycling of capital has not started in india yeah second there's a lot of capital which goes into this whole startup ecosystem by the government okay right? the federal government actually has a lot of open doors through which it funds the vc funds which it gives money to the vc funds and the vc funds in turn are able to deploy that money to build a lot of these businesses which may not see the sun probably after 2 years right but that capital comes in from the government in india this has recently started right where sidbi is partnering with almost all the funds. vc funds here which has merit and giving them the money to deploy राइट right? तो ये साइकिल अपने आप में इंडिया में अभी स्टार्ट हुआ है जो 20 साल पहले यूएस में स्टार्ट हो चुका है राइट चाइना इज अ वेरी डिफरेंट प्रॉब्लम वेयर अ लॉट ऑफ दिस मनी एक्चुअली केम फ्रॉम गवर्नमेंट अ लॉट ऑफ दिस मनी केम फ्रॉम अ लॉट ऑफ प्राइवेट प्लेयर्स राइट द टेक बिजनेस इज रियली बिकेम वेरी बिग बट दे आल्सो बिकेम वेरी पावरफुल आउट देयर या it's it's a very unique problem to face out there where uh, there's there's a government backlash where the especially the tech companies mm. are not able to drive their businesses their way i think we are all very fortunate to be in a country like india where the regulators talk to the industry and there's a very clear conversation and the outcome which you see is never one sided it's not that the government decides ki aaj mujhe ye karna hai and it goes and does that mm-hmm. right it's very pro business government where they take information from consultants from businesses from founders try and figure out what works best for the industry right and then the new regulation comes out i'm thinking of an incident <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> there has been mul- see here's here's the difference right and i i think i'm i can tell you this now because mm. i am on the advisory board of uh, multiple entities who talk to government talk to regulators the ball is always in our court right when a document comes to us saying this is the regulation that we are trying to work upon we need your inputs we are the guys who are lazy enough not to go and give the right input or we are the guys who are serving our own personal interest and not serving the interest of the whole industry mm. right when my inputs don't go or don't go in the right flavor they are not taken in consideration and then when the when the regulation comes out i'll go out in the public and start criticizing saying ye galat hai wo <laughs> tax galat hai ye reg- it's not like that it's it's a mistake at our and it's not the government oh interesting point well let's go let's go to the point where you said a lot of people uh you know value your business because they've seen some business just like that around the world yeah okay so the business you're building yeah. stock group <laughs> is there a large business around the world any large company which has been able to do this nay no, raj uh, it was surprising and i you know it's very unique i did not do enough research before i started building this out okay i want to know this part now it was very <laughs> impulsive so why did you decide to do this 2019 uh, december i was at isb at a 10 year reunion and I was discussing with my friend, saying, "Yar, kya kare? What are you doing with your money? Where are you investing?" Almost everyone was very excited about stock market, right? It was in a boom, but everyone was very skeptical and had this fear of losing their money. And these are guys who have who have done finance, right? People who are CA, CFA, MBA, and at amazingly good positions in different organizations. and these are the guys whose money is sitting in their fixed deposit saying 
अजय बता कौन से स्टॉक में पैसा नहीं एवरी वन वॉन्ट्स टू इन्वेस्ट हिज मनी बट दे हैव दिस वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग इनिबिशन ऑफ लूजिंग दैट मनी विच गेव मी दिस होल आइडिया सींग राइट वेन आई टॉक टू फोक्स एंड नॉट जस्ट इन आईज बी इट्स लाइक इन डिफरेंट सर्कल्स डिफरेंट वॉक्स ऑफ लाइफ इन माई फैमिली विद माई फ्रेंड्स सबको पैसे इन्वेस्ट करने एवरी वन वॉन्ट्स टू ग्रो इज कैपिटल एवरीबडी राइट बट एवरी वन इज सो वरिड अबाउट द रिस्क द रीजन बींग दे डोंट अंडरस्टैंड द रिस्क आउट देयर एंड वेन आई वॉज डिस्कसिंग सो मी एंड राहुल द फाउंडर ऑफ मोगलिक्स वी स्टार्टेड डिस्कसिंग दिस आइडिया सिटिंग आउट देयर and one thing we realize is our education system lacks this information think of it like this our families right our whole education systems in childhood they don't teach us how to invest money right my parents have always taught me how to save my money paise kaise bachane hain kaise savings account mein rakhne hain how not to spend money yeah. no one teaches us how to invest money so the problem happens when you start earning when you have that capital you have almost no playbook saying how do i invest my capital and you go and do exactly what your last generation has been doing you go and put it in the savings account in march when your hr sends you a message saying atc savings ke liye aapko invest karna hai <laughs> you go and put money in a mutual <laughs> fund and your in mutual fund all of these things that's yeah. it right and you only put that much jitne aapke dalne se aapko atc ke rebates milenge true rest of the money is sitting idle out there that to you put out and help some good bank guy made insane commissions <laughs> without understanding where do you Raj, have been you are so correct on this think of the guy who is selling you the mutual fund right it's 90% of the people don't even know the name of the mutual fund manager jisme unhone invest kiya oh yes right so the guy who is selling you the mutual fund is generally a retail branch bank uh, correspondent manager right who comes to your home explains you sir isme kar lijiye ye bahut acha hai right he would have not invested his own money in that yeah. fund right he is just doing it because yeah. he needs to make that 2% commission and meet his target so that's the that's the lacuna in this industry that's the problem in this whole investment industry most of the people learn at the cost of losing their first few lakh rupees oh yes and they don't come back saying boss there is something wrong out there there's some inherent evil in the market mai wahan pa- wapas paise nahi dal raha you you're so spot on okay i started investing the same way uh, i i was fortunate that at 18 only my business was doing good huh. and I, i started making money and i thought ki ab investment karna hai and i was always this guy because i used to read endless books about you do what you understand <laughs> yes. baaki sab find a right person for yeah. it okay which is like a fair strategy in most of the cases so i found out like a good bank guy <laughs> who who was who was my rm okay so he's the guy who's helping me with everything and he's only telling me i was like i told him i want to invest in stocks and stuff ha huh. kaise kare then he comes out like main ghar aata hu wo ghar aaya ha usne mera investment to karwa diya meri mom ka bhi le liye mera dad ka bhi le liya meri didi ka usne 10 account mein 10 alag alag jage he made us invest ha huh. xyz amount small 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 savvy and for next year and half or like 18 20 like 2 years maan lo mota mota I am going on being like ki main to bahut invest karta hu yaar like <laughs> I invest in the right things yes. because none of my friends are investing and I am feeling so good of like this and that only to realize that most of the mutual funds which are put in in yeah they are unki itni crazy commissions hai I don't know whether where things are going <laughs> maximum things which my mom and dad have invested in are ulips and I I just like and it crashed it is it crazy all... it's crazy and then when people talk about and it I was 20 and I started reading about investments because this is like a new thing because somebody asked me one of my friends he was in an, an, uh-huh. another case he was like he made his quick money in trading okay and he's like what's the return you're getting on your fund i was like ye to koi maine question hi nahi pucha i thought didn't even know that you ask at the end of the year like what is the return your mutual yes. funds are growing at right that's a stupid thing at my end uh-huh. and i went on and i saw that in last two years i grew at 2% that's it yeah Oh my god. 2%. <laughs> and it was a large bank and I was like 
Why this happened? And you would have probably given two and a half percent in commission. Now. Exactly. So technically, I lost my money. Not bad. And after not bad, it's like what? <laughs> and now in my head, okay. And the guy who go, who sold me this is now work. It now works at another another yeah. bank. So he's not even there. So he'll come back again, friend, sir. Yes. Usme na ye ye char scheme the hi nahi. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. He did the same thing. Well, sir, उधर तो pressure था. उन लोगों ने बोल दिया था. इधर मैं आपको सही चीज़. Well, a, I'm never <laughs> trusting you. B, now my question is, how do I go to my dad and tell him that you know I actually fucked up? Yeah. <laughs> Because Indian parents, they don't trust the markets. They don't trust investments. Yes. The max they trust is, बेटा उधर flat ले लिया, उधर ज़मीन ले ली, उधर ये ले लिया. That's it. True. Nothing else they're gonna trust that, right? Which most of the people have done good jobs with the real investments, uh, real estate investment. Most of the people have not. So you just know this. So I'm just thinking, how do I do this? How do I do this? And <laughs> and then I actually started reading. So it's so true that the awareness and the education around it is it's not so there. low. It's not so there, low. right? It's it's like cool thing to do, right? But people don't understand it's a necessity for us. And Raj, I learned exactly the way you did. I lost more than 80 lakh rupees in stock market 2008 crash. Uske pehle kya tha? I would call up my friends like every week, and our discussion was not around, right? Where have you invested? Our discussion was who has generated higher return in last week. <laughs> yeah. It was a bragging right for yeah. us, right? Because was market was on an all-time high. It was a bull market, and sabko we took stock market for granted. Yeah. Right? We're like, it's not about who is generating return. It's about who is generating a higher return. return. Yes. one week and it all crashed right oh yeah and we were not even so we were trading on tips seeing kiske paas kaun si tip aayi hai and log us pe trade kiye ja rahe the that's when i realized i have almost zero clue about the market in which i keep investing all my money i like almost no clue which one where did you lose the most like give me one stock which you lose i tell you mine <laughs> <laughs> I I invested like so when after the like twenty when I started no huh. I thought ki ab to mujhe aa gaya ab main king hu like because I've read one book about how to put so in the stock I stocks. lost the maximum money in real estate stocks oh right kyunki jis speed se wo crash hona chalu hue and there was no way for me to even go and sell the stock out there is nobody would buy no one was buy, buying it real estate <laughs> stock i lost my maximum money in a company called sizzlon energy wow. <laughs> <laughs> so i i don't know how it's doing now i have yeah. no idea i don't know if people have made money on this but i invested at all time high i think till last year that company never came back to that point it and can't. it has been years now it it's just so bad i lost yeah. so much money <laughs> it was crazy and no. then second i lost my money in airline stocks oh. i was like <laughs> because you know in my head thesis was renewable energy's future yes so the highest share is loan so they're going to make money then airlines again i thought airlines india's middle class india's be, uh, huh. coming up so there's going to be high without realizing it airlines are middle class indians koi lena dene crude se lena dene i didn't know the global geopolitics yeah. and so, factors so which matter so your matters. first two part was right hmm. right saying on a macro level is the country doing well are they going to spend in say renewable energy one and second are people going to spend more on airline yes travel yes right but fundamentally is the company doing well or not that's something you never check <laughs> yes that's never that's that that we never check so how do we do it in stock grow tell me now um, i stopped you in middle of it so you came up with this because nobody knew mujhe bhi nahi pata tha to maine kya kiya i after i lost the money first thought was like yaar wapas to kabhi jana hi nahi hai hmm then's like nahi paise to wapas nikalne padenge so how do you do this and the whole idea was I'm not right, but then there are at least fifty other guys I know personally who have made money while the market was crashing. Hmm. Right? So, उन्हों ने पैसे बनाए और मैंने खोए. They are probably smarter than me, but how are they smart? Smart, yeah. उनको क्या आता है जो मुझे नहीं आता है? How does a fund manager do this? Right? How does a hedge fund manager do something like this with billions of dollars? and that's where i discovered the only course available is a cfa course out there which okay. tells you at least ki ek fund manager kaise invest karta yeah. hai and i was probably the worst student of that time 
because i was not there to get a job with the cfa degree i was like bas mujhe mere paise wapas nikal to main aise class mein bhi na i would question some of these concepts there's a very interesting concept in uh, cfa which used to say markets are perfect hmm. right and they teach you they drill this into you saying markets are perfect at any point of time and everyone has all the information about a stock okay it's like you know it is fundamentally flawed बिकॉज अगर हर एक बंदे के पास सारा इन्फॉर्मेशन है देन एवरी स्टॉक वुड आइदर बी हिटिंग अपर सर्किट और लोअर सर्किट आपको भी पता है बिजनेस अच्छा कर रहे हैं यू विल ऑल्सो बी अर आई ऑल्सो बी अर देन दर इज नो सेलर आउट देर दैट होल कंसेप्ट इज इन करेक्टरी बिलीव दैट इज गोन इट्स नॉट गोन करेक्ट एंड आई स्टार्ट इट चैलेंजिंग अलॉट ऑफ दीज कंसेप्ट विच वर बींग टॉट सींग इट्स प्रॉब्लम नॉट राइट एंड दैट्स वे यू गो बैक एंड से जो सिखा रहे हैं शायद उसमें कुछ गलत है दैट्स द रीजन पीपल लाइक अस गेट विक्टिमाइज एवरी टाइम देर समथिंग दैट गोज रॉन्ग इन द मार्केट एंड वंस यू स्टार्ट क्वेश्चनिंग द सब्जेक्ट्स द टॉपिक्स व्हाट इज बीइंग टॉट यू गो बियॉन्ड द बुक्स यू स्टार्ट टॉकिंग टू रियल पीपल हु आर डूइंग दीज रियल ट्रेड्स एंड आई स्टार्टेड मीटिंग ऑल ऑफ दीज ट्रेडर्स ट्रेडर्स इन्वेस्टर्स अंडरस्टैंडिंग फ्रॉम देम वो कैसे कर रहे हैं राइट right? leave aside how a option is priced how mm. a future contract is priced when they are trading in their excel sheet how are they pricing it what is the outcome they are expecting leave aside the book yeah. and that's where i realized that it's everything is beyond what we are studying mm. and everything is in how people are practicing it right the real market the real trades unfortunately everyone who even gets a glimpse of how markets work is on literature yeah and it's absolutely useless for most of the people because if you start pricing and building your model on those things that you see in the book you'll always be wrong so you mean like theory is just to give you an understanding of what works but what really works is when you actually get your hands dirty bang on you want and get to learn this your cost of getting your hand dirty is a few lakh rupees that you will lose in the market which is an antithesis kyunki agar aapne paise kho diye aap wapas nahi aoge hmm right that's why we said you need something which is experiential learning for people that is they get to learn how markets work they get to experience how to buy and sell stocks but not let them lose their real money if they do that they'll be terribly discouraged hmm. if they are discouraged they'll not come back and that's how we started conceptualizing stock group i think let people experience stock market by buying and selling stock almost in a real life scenario but without losing capital second most important thing is people don't invest based on broker reports on technical fundamental analysis people invest based on what social cues they get who are talking about it yeah. right and you know what's happening on twitter <clears throat> how many people talk about the stock what kind of messaging is happening yeah. which friends of mine are buying and selling this right so they buy on social cues and that's why we said if they are all buying on social cues where are these social cues these are all off off market conversations maine aapse pucha aapne apne dost se pucha right he is buying so you will buy and because you are buying i'll say yeah, raj smart banda hai khareed raha hai to main bhi soch raha hu le hi leta hu right <laughs> and you know finally you have no one to blame because i'll say acha maine khareeda kyun raj ne khareeda raj ne kisi aur ko dekh ke khareeda we have to qualify all of these social cues right and we said let's bring all of these offline murmur chatter online okay but more importantly the guy who says yaar maine last month 10% return banaye how do i know he's is is he's on the faking or all is yeah he said let all of these people build their portfolios online right on stock group in live market social investing now if he is good enough he'll beat everyone else mm. right and we will reward him for doing that we will give him cash prizes for doing that oh. but now we have built a incentive system saying every guy who is doing it right he'll keep doing it right and he will work hard towards it because one 
we are giving him a lot of cash price for doing it more importantly he's validating what he is saying and he's getting a lot of followers because now if i'm doing it right i have 50000 followers who are checking on my portfolio asking me how are you doing this right and every guy who is faking it right will get questions saying if you are so good at markets where is your stock grow portfolio yeah. show to me yeah oh that's so true in fact this gives me good framework to decide who's going to be my next fund manager <laughs> <laughs> right because all i can do is like you know the moment you make little money i don't know how but every fund manager in the city knows <laughs> they reach out they reach yes. out to you and they're like okay invest with us invest with us yep. all we can do is here's one quarter three months yeah yes my stock broke out <laughs> help me yeah. out show me that this is what you would do for me if you do it this is the amount i'm going to give you because then i'm like immune like i'm literally like immunizing myself from bang on every other right? person and the guy who was doing good last quarter may not be good this quarter and it's not his problem it's because the sector he is an expert in may not be doing so well but there's some other guy and some other mm. sector which is doing very well can you switch your capital from there to here yeah. you can but this today no one else to tell you how to do this no one else to teach you how to do this and the biggest problem especially in stock market is it's a distrust market yeah right the the emotional challenge that we face is we don't trust it and what we are trying to do is saying solve this distrust problem right create trust in that market help every user build his social trust circle aapne jinke portfolios dekhe hain follow kiye hain audit kiye hain and then there are other guys who are following them auditing them talking to them these are real people hmm. who are building real portfolios generating real returns competing with other guys and beating them week on week if they are good you ought to follow these guys you yeah. ought to figure out how they are doing this and then start your investment journey with them interesting and how do you do you just ask them questions about how did you figure that out or how did you do that the moment if somebody is doing good if he's doing good and uh, because it's a social platform people have access to talk to him portfolio and stuff right? and they can see what they are doing and i can if i like you i can start chatting with you i can ask you questions in general people love getting followers right people yeah. love answering their questions the difference between a platform like this and any other platform is intent of a user here is not to troll anyone the intent is to learn saying agar mm. wo paise bana raha hai to shayad main bhi bana sakta hu right so he comes here with the with the appetite saying yaar kaun kya kar raha hai mujhe bhi samajhna hai seekhna hai and i have to invest my money i have to grow my money i'm not here to prove people wrong i'm here to figure out who is right dude this is such a crazy thing i think the first thing you should do is get all the <laughs> finance influencers who are talking about trading on Bang the on. platform and then let them Raj, have their control they we have spoken crazy. to so many of them trust me 50% of them would say i'll do a i'll do a video with you i'll talk about you but i won't be my portfolio i'll not put my portfolio out there <laughs> <laughs> i know i know what and you mean youtube the guy has a million followers he has so many strategies and the moment we say these are interesting why don't you put your portfolio out here they don't do it yeah that's because of course there are yeah. like 100 factors and the guy can lose not only his money but social image and like <laughs> a lot of his social clout would go down Correct. if even one thing goes wrong and maybe the guy is right but if one quarter goes wrong people are going to be which so is okay explain good. right yeah. and then we have people from different walks of life right there are guys who are sitting out of like small town like uh, say rajkot in gujarat doesn't have a ca cfa qualification but he understands metal sector so well that he beats the market mm. right and for me he's the real hero and that's the real hero we want to create out of different walks of life saying they know how to pick the sector they know how to pick these stocks they know how to read the market right follow these real guys yeah that's that's an interesting take let me see like and you must be having a dashboard who made the maximum yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. yes so we have a champions chart it it's very dynamic right it keeps of changing course. 
But what you will see is the top 100 guys usually would remain consistent. There'll be a 10% fallout, 10% new people would come in, which is good because we see these new ideas coming in. We are trying to expand it beyond stocks into bond, into futures and options. Because Raj, what has changed majorly and especially from a macro factor perspective in our country is one FD rates have gone down, right? Yeah. So the whole idea of keeping money in fixed deposits is is pretty much out. Three yeah. and a half percent post tax. It's almost dead. Doesn't doesn't make a difference. Real estate returns have gone down. Your rent return would be like two percent. Oh, it's horrible. I <laughs> the the place I live in Bombay, the rental yield the my landlord would be making is one percent. Right. So it's crazy. And that appreciation is not there. Yeah. So the whole idea of keeping money in real estate is gone. So now people are left with two major options, stocks and bonds. What is happening, especially with the generation is, and understand this, the last generation, uh, my parents, they were here to secure their life, right? Because India was a poor country. We were coming out of poverty at that point of time. So everyone wanted to have Roti, Kapra, Makan, security of life. My generation, when we started, we were persuading lifestyle. And that's the reason all these e-commerce businesses grew because we were all spending. Mm. Right? Now the next generation, the millennial generation, which is there, they don't have to worry about security in life. They don't have to worry about lifestyle because the last two generations have solved it for them. The money that they have at their dispense is the money that they'll be investing, right? Because everything else is taken care of. And these are the guys who need to be equipped with the right knowledge. So they are not wasting their money on buying depreciating assets, but they are utilizing that money and investing in the right assets. So, okay. Here's a really like, like ending two, three questions I have based on all the things you have seen. Now you have seen this all, okay? You have seen people who have like on the platform who have had great strategies or bad strategies you've had your own experience of losing money yep. yeah then you have your own experience of making money then you have experience of private markets around the world consulting everything okay tell me like what are the three things majorly people should look at from a macro perspective in a particular investment before they're deciding like this is whatever i want to invest what are the three questions they should try to find answers on I'm sure there'll be a list of like 10 questions <laughs> yes. or 20 questions, but like, what are the first three? Like, if you don't have answers to these three questions, like don't even think about this particular investment. Got it. Right. So from a macro factor perspective, the first thing that people have to think about is, is this sector going to do well? And this answer is not going to come from a newspaper or from an expert. This will come from your own experience, right? Mm. Say for an example, and might sound like a lousy example say a recession is going to come, right? What is the product in which people will not stop spending, right? Answer is basic FMCG products. I'll not Media. stop uh, using toothbrush and toothpaste. Yeah. I'll probably not stop spending on soaps. I'll not stop spending on alcohol. Probably the alcohol and tea consumption will, will go, go up, up yeah. right? If And common sense is required. If that is going to happen, which businesses currently are doing better than the whole sector, right? If say sector return is 8% and there are two companies which are doing 12% return, see what are they doing right? Is the management quality good, right? So if I have trust in the sector, if I have trust second level in the company, third, if I have trust third level in the management saying they'll be able to maneuver through it, I'll go and invest my money there. How do you judge management? It's so difficult. It's a loosely used term again. Like it's so, you look at hundred like teams. Okay. There's one CEO who's been doing yeah. good for five years and then he changes and then there's another CEO. <laughs> Just like. Uh, Raj, so interestingly, when people invest, they don't look at management. Okay. Right. If 
see when you were doing sizzlon you did not go back and see who's the ceo the ceo i only looked at ceo <laughs> <laughs> didn't get anything about him but okay <laughs> right so today the advantage for us is the moment we look at a business it's very easy for me to go back on linkedin and see their profiles what have they done right if it's a company which has outperformed market for say couple of quarters there'll be enough coverage on it mm. one by the brokers and second in media there'll be something out there i can see the people and their real profiles out there ki abhi kya kar rahe hain pehle kya kar rahe the and you see the transition point of maybe this person joined correct. and after that the transition happened correct. in this uh, correct so when you can see that very basic research you don't really need to go and pick up the phone and speak with the management but if you can see that they have survived through difficult times the management has come together at this point mm. this is how they have been performing by the way the ceo cto cfo their past performance has equally been well it's perfectly okay to yeah. put money there was a there's a simple a strategy which i read by one of the people who used to work very closely with Warren Buffett and the one simple line and i thought this makes sense he's like the first thing you have to do if you if you're looking for great consistent returns yeah. you cannot like extraordinary returns extraordinarily you have to do 100 things but if you're looking like great or like returns consistent returns all you have to do is you look at the financial cycles every 10 to 11 years there must be a crash yes there's be a, okay <laughs> yeah So you look at companies which have been there for two to three crashes. Yes. Okay. You see that what was their growth? Were they growing during the crash also or no? If the first is you just you know you just take these companies out from the rest. Yes. And then you all you do math on these companies only. So you only have to focus on the companies which like have been profitable for last ten twelve years. They have survived the crash. Yes. And still they are growing. up and down growth it's okay cagr goes up and down but legacy growth, businesses which can't die because you can't stop using their yes. products the classic example is coke right irrespective of whatever cycles you are in you will not stop consuming cold drinks oh yeah right yeah. See, on the other side when the crash happens the one company or one sector which really gets hit is the banking sector so uh, right after the crash that's one sector you should get in because if a economy has to build back any country has to build back the first sector which has to do well is the financial right. sector oh. right so that's always a very good time to go and invest in a banking company but then that's like such a crazy <laughs> time because everybody is scared ki last jo crash hua tha wo shayad kisi bank ki wajah se hua tha to when everyone bank mein kaise jaunga yeah but when everyone is greedy you should exit when everyone is scared you should invest ha ah, and then learn all of this to your platform because <laughs> this say like you know the quote is easy to say but when everybody is scared no yes. you are also everybody only <laughs> <laughs> you are also scared agree agree everyone is scared and that's the reason we need a community where people can exchange thoughts ideas comfort each other right because when you are scared and i come back with real stats saying every time this happens market comes up right it comes back last think of when covid struck right when lockdown happened markets went from 12000 to 7000 okay and i was like building or i was starting to build stock grow every guy every friend said this is the worst time to build a platform like this yes. right i had like almost 1 and a half 2 million dollar in angel commitment from my folks and everyone came back saying I think I'll need 2 months 3 months <laughs> right because of the cash situation yeah I want to invest but I'll do it after 3 months yeah the thought I had in my mind is this is not what I'm building for 6 months 1 year I'm building it for a long term more importantly if I don't build this today someone else is going to build this tomorrow and I'll probably live a life of regret saying I could have done that I should mm. have done that and that's not what I want to do right worst case scenario i lose salary of one year i would have learned so much in that one year i'm not going to die with that one year salary in my bank account it would be much more than that it's worth taking a chance worst case scenario i'll fail but i'll not regret yeah. best case scenario it will work out trust me in covid times building a business everything changed right yeah. the whole idea of how to build a startup was out of the window talent was not there capital was not there 
it was sheer grit determination and few folks who believed in the idea coming together saying let's do this and that's how it built that's out. how you did do you read a okay. lot a, a lot. lot yes okay what tell, tell me like two three top books which you feel like every young entrepreneur or young investor or anyone who wants to make money. i i read a lot of philosophy books okay interesting right? my favorite is wayne dyer okay right and uh, i think every time i am at a emotional crisis point when i don't know what to do i go back uh, sometimes read his books sometimes just go through his videos wayne dyer ka any one of the books which you would recommend or no like any book you pick up i think any of them they are all is there any good. specific philosophy which you feel like that helped you a lot which you feel like <laughs> this particular philosophy from wayne dyer was like spot on i'll i'll walk you through it right so hmm. very interestingly in one of his videos he explains uh that and he he walks through a specific journey of a person saying i am walking through a lane i can see there's a hole and i fall into it i come out of it it was not my mistake because i did not see it i'm going through the same lane back i fall into this again i could see this this is my mistake and in the third attempt he says i'm walking through the lane i can see this hole i move around it and now i'm in the next lane that is we do the same thing in our lives we go and keep making the same mistake again and again we go through the same experiences in our life till we learn that lesson and we say i've learned this lesson and that's when you go to the next phase of life I think I've done this so many times every time I face the same problem I go back retrospecting why am I seeing this again and again probably there's a lesson to be learned and once you do that you will actually go into the next phase of your life so the idea is that if you make mistake most of the time you just ignore it instead of actually sitting down and retrospecting about okay yes where the where did I make the mistake you will never move to the next phase of life if you keep doing the same thing Mm. Isn't like all your motivational quotes about keep doing every day <laughs> same thing. <laughs> Isn't that true? So that's one philosophy. Any other books you felt like something which is really interesting? This something which I learned very unique from one of my mentors, and he said, "Treat people the way you want to be treated." Right? Whenever I'm building a business, and especially when I was building Stock Pro. the whole idea of how do you build the culture of a business and because it was so unique time uh, see the identity of a startup was always the establishment uh, that is where the office is mm. what kind of talent they have the ceos the ctos out there and what are the investors who are out there we had to throw almost all of these concepts out of the window people were working from home what had taken the center stage was the product itself right hmm. nothing else mattered and in that time thinking of what the business culture would look like what the startup culture would look like was very different and i had to go back and start thinking saying all of this is not going to work how do i build the culture in my company hmm. and i went back to the very simple philosophy saying everyone whom i'm bringing on board has to be someone like me who has that grit that hunger that energy to build this out his his resume is a hygiene that is usne kya kiya hai abhi tak is a hygiene his current position in his life is what i'm trying to understand right he might be a guy in his 40 in his 20 but what is driving him right now is going to help me build this business and the primary philosophy was again the same thing i wanted to treat every guy who was coming on board exactly how i want the world to treat me deep and it takes a lot of time to do this honestly like when you are thinking in a in a startup like this kind of thinking is i don't know how you are able to maintain it because you want to break things move fast every day and then you're going down and trying to decide if i'm getting x person on board what is the factor which is driving him or her and like how you it's it's a slow painful task it is rajan that's how to, how that's the reason my that. team is like 55 people hmm. we 
it's not that we screen a lot of people right but the moment anyone in the team thinks that you know the culture that we have built that person is not going to be a fit to that culture we very politely tell that person that you are very good at what you are doing we probably can't give you the kind of pathway you are looking for right and that's the reason we'll probably keep in touch but probably find another opportunity to bring you on board interesting well the last question of the day i have uh, we've covered like a lot of things there's one question which i ask everybody where do you feel is a which is the next sector for india to go and build stuff because yeah. most of the sectors which people were answering about last year are now very <laughs> not very in not in like very yeah. good shape honestly <laughs> so because this this podcast like lot of entrepreneurs lot of people who are thinking to now become an entrepreneur uh-huh. or maybe other people who want to just grow their money or have adopt a founder's mindset raj i think this is super close to my heart i have personally attempted to do this and failed uh and this is this is agri sector or i would say agri tech when you look at india's production as compared to a lot of other developed countries we are far behind right but that is also an opportunity for us seeing if we are far behind there's so much to improve the whole supply chain is so broken there's so much that can be done in just the agri supply chain if if you think e-commerce consumption is big think of the food, food that we color. eat every day right that consumption is much 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 bigger than the whole e-commerce industry which say handful of vcs funded and drove when it became so big if even 50% of those same investors come back and start investing in agri tech sector this sector can become super big yeah in and you know it's in india specifically this is one of the terms which everybody says that we don't have a problem of food scarcity we have a problem of food quality and security bang on so bang on. if we can solve that that be like a massive opportunity for it is and you know the mindset has changed i am willing to pay a price for good quality food yeah i'm not worried anymore saying where is my food going to come from for next day true and that's what is growing like that's the that's that's far majority is now going moving towards that they are ready to it pay is. more for the quality right so if someone time. really has to change this he just has to go to a mandi in the morning 4 o'clock and see how the food is being treated yeah right the whole idea of farm to fork has been out there and we have been talking about it for last decade there are few startups who have started building this but that market is so huge we can absorb at least 50 such more startups who can each take one single food producing farm to fork i'll manage this whole chain yeah only one fruit one particular food or fruit like that's one it. vegetable is sorted that's it so like i have a our friend he has a business of avocados okay and he's minting <laughs> like he makes so much money is the business growing he's always at a place where there's more demand and less supply is not being yes. and i thought when we were having this conversation 5 years ago i said avocados kon <laughs> khate hai hey? <laughs> <laughs> like how are you even thinking of selling avocados and he's like it's minimum 500 crore opportunity that's what he says like, who eats avocado 500 crore worth of avocado who's eating and i thought probably he's going to export but he's not even gone to a level where he started exporting it's only india where he's able to build like such a food chain bang on you see even if you go and solve street food problem yeah right the whole supply chain is so broken just for your puchka wala and the muri walas of the world if you solve it for them it's a multi billion dollar opportunity sitting out there that's my next gig for <laughs> sure i want to solve how do we eat pani puri in the most hygienic in the quality bang on, way bang on bang on i'm my i'm an investor in it <laughs> <laughs> no thanks a lot i'm really passionate about pani puri by the way like i really want raj that. build this I, i'll give you the whole uh, blueprint there are people who have tried to do this right not got funded at the right time but this is the right time to build a business like that especially post pandemic everyone is so i would say so so ideal now saying aisa hygiene hona chahiye food mein yeah 
this is the perfect time to build this <laughs> Damn. Thanks a lot. Thanks for giving a very unconventional idea about <laughs> building a business. Guys, go solve the problem of what do you eat at a, a probably like a radi or a thela. Man. Try to solve their food chain and you'll have a billion dollar opportunity. Thanks a lot for doing this. Thank you. Absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Thank you so much for watching this episode till the end. Make sure that you like, subscribe, share, comment and at least tell about this podcast to one person because you never know that one conversation can spark an idea and that idea can be the start of a new journey which can turn into a billion dollar industry and fasten our nation's growth. So make sure that you're contributing just by sharing the right conversations. Until the next episode, keep figuring out. <laughs>